Okay, Thank, thanks so much for the introduction. Um, so I'm speaking to you from, it's very good to be with you all, and I am speaking with you from Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, I am an artist. I work in the Department of Human Biology at the University of Cape Town. And I teach a method of observation to uh, medical students and clinicians. And the method involves the sense of touch and drawing. And I'll share some slides with you now and explain this process to you. Uh, there we go. Right. So the method, of course, it's called the haptico visual observation and drawing method. These are the types of drawings you we we typically see, uh, which are kind of a um, combination of cross contour and gesture drawings. Um, again, we're not trying to make anything artistic. We're using mark making. We're using drawing as as a, as a way of representing what we are feeling with the one hand. Uh, we'll go into that a bit more. So just to tell you what I'm going to go through now is uh, I'll tell you about what I teach, and why the sense of touch is important in observation, um, the method itself, uh, something of that. And then um, we've developed over the last three years, myself and my colleague, um, Dr. Ian Keenan at Newcastle University uh, at the medical school, we've developed an online course, which is free. And I'll give you a, the uh, QR code for that. So just, this is where I locate myself at the University of Cape Town. It's not a Photoshop drawing. It's, that's the mountain the, uh, as part of um, the table uh, mountain, uh, nature reserve. Uh, this is, you know, where I teach at the anatomy building at the university. And this is a typical class, okay, um, of students. Uh, again, we, we're not making art. We are trying to observe more of what is in front of us. So I first start with a non-anatomical um, object, in this case, a hammer, and um, take the students through various stages of learning. And you can see here that what she's doing is she's feeling with one hand while she draws with the other. Just some more um, images to look at. Um, some images. We use um, Create a color, 8B, it's very soft, it's cut in half so that we can actually grasp the, the, the grasp and draw with the broad side as well as the sort of the end of it. So why is touch important um, in observing? So even with an object in plain sight and in close proximity to us, there's a lot more in front of us than meets our eye. And by using our sense of touch, we can observe more of what is in front of us. We gather more data about the object. So the science of this is as follows. The little figure in the, on the far left uh, the, uh, is called the cortical homunculus. What it does is it, repre it represents the number of nerves coming from any part of the body to the sensory cortex of the brain, okay? So it represents the relative amount of afferent nerves to the sensory cortex. And you can see that the hands take up a very large part um, of the sensory cortex and motor cortex of the brain. And so it makes sense, of course, to use touch as, a, as well as our sight, but to use touch to add information about an object, especially the three-dimensional form of an object. So uh, professors Roberta Klatsky and Susan Lederman, since 1987, they have been researching haptics, which is touch. And they classified six different, uh, what they call exploratory procedures. So we, we use these procedures all the time when someone hands you an object in order to extract object properties. And in, uh, in the 
method that I teach, we use, we employ these natural exploratory procedures, but we employ them actively to extract the object properties. I'd like to, you know, if you look at this drawing, this was done by a, a clinician who'd never drawn before. And if you know of Frank Auerbach's, uh, the very celebrated British artist, Frank Auerbach's work, you know, you can, you'll see a resemblance in terms of the semiotic value of the marks that are made. So the, the marks have a descriptive value in, in, in um, describing the form of this hammer. Also, in terms of observation, if you look at the hammer from one perspective, um, you don't see the top part of it. So, so what we're talking about is what we are talking about is multi um, multi sensory and multi perspective observation. Again, in the representation of this object, well, this is a um, part of the um, humerus, um, but you can see how the the form of the object is even more accentuated through drawing and as we know botanical artists use drawing and painting to show the um the anatomy of the of a plant which they can show far more than a um than a photograph can in in this in this drawing you can see um when one turns the humerus slide the the, the bottom of the humerus slightly, you can see there's a condyle, a little out, a little crop, outcrop. And in the bottom picture, it's just, this is actually one of my drawings. I took the um uh the humerus and I turned it through 360 degrees and then joined both sides together. Okay. Ah, so ooh, what I what I'm going to show you. Ah, so the, what are the benefits? Okay, the benefits of this method for anatomy students and clinicians are the enhanced observation of the three-dimensional form of anatomical parts. And three-dimensional spatial awareness is very important in the study of anatomy because the body is three-dimensional and one has to, you know, have a sort of cognitive and improved spatial awareness in any case. The cognitive memorization of anatomical parts is a three-dimensional mental picture that's created as well through this method. And the improved three-dimensional spatial awareness and the ability to orient within the volume and you know, within the space of the anatomy, and of course, an ability to draw as well. I'm going to share with you now a short video of which was uh, made and edited by a student, Lala Mohammed. And it, what it will show you is, so it's an exercise that it's a group exercise and watch the students' hands, okay, as they feel the humerus and as they draw it. So they're feeling with one hand and drawing with the other at the same time. Um, so just understand please that this exercise is done after some hours of, uh, of drawing. Uh, here we go share this with you just enlarge this okay here we oh sorry i need to also share the sound with you so let me do that ah uh, here we go um, there we go remember watch their hands can you see yeah you can see it oh let me see. Uh, okay. Right, so let's go.
Oops. Okay. Hold on. I have to stop it. Right. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, I will return to the slides. Uh, let's share that again. There we go. Let's get to where we left off. Okay. There we go. Right. So, so um, just sorry, please excuse. You could, can you see? Oh, no, you can't. Oh, you can see that one now. Yes. So, essentially, what we're talking about, like touch is gesture. And remember the exploratory procedures of contour following, enclosure lateral motion and drawing is gesture. And we all know that there's such things cross contour drawing marks and what's also known as gestural drawing marks. So what? So we're exploring with a sense of touch, we're feeling the, the, the object or the anatomical part. It's a manual gestural activity and we're representing what is felt by drawing it on paper, which is also a manual gestural activity. So we explore an object with one hand using the exploratory procedures, and with the other, we make corresponding marks with graphite in order to reflect and record these. So uh, we're all familiar with um, Henry Moore and Giacometti. So Henry, this is an example of Henry Moore's cross contour drawing, which is what it is, and an example of Giacometti's um, gestural drawing. And when we kind of put those together, we get, you know, and combination with exploratory procedure movements, we get what we get there. It's a kind of combination of those. So the key steps in the teaching of this method, and the first step is overcoming. And these, these two first, the first step actually is extremely important. So we overcome repetitive and predictable upper limb, which is the arm and hand movements, by introducing it will, through some exercises, purposive and fluid mark making gestures. That's uh, essential to this because we we repeat gestures. We do repetitive gestures in our daily lives all the time. And in order to draw or in order to make the kind of marks we need to make to reflect what we're feeling onto the paper, we need to have we need to be able to really kind of dance, dance the line out onto the paper. The next step is we use touch and sight to observe an object, and, and we have, so we, we apply purpose of um, uh, exploratory procedures to observe the form of the object. So we gather that information into our sensory cortex, as it were, and then um, we while we're feeling the object, we simultaneously make drawing marks that represent the object. Okay. Um, what we do as well is life drawing. Well, it's life drawing, but it's with a, a man standing next to a skeleton, a real skeleton. Get the students to draw the skeleton and then the person. These are some of the drawings that emerge. And remember, these are medical students. And these are 45-second gesture drawings, which I think as artists and people who draw, you, you, you really appreciate. Some more. This is the, the model turning very slowly 360 degrees while being drawn. This course is also taught to um, clinicians, radiation oncology planners, etc., and it's accredited. Uh, also teach at various universities online. These are students at the University of British Columbia. Um, these are obviously um, vertebra. Some of the universities I teach. I teach. I do a lot of work at Newcastle University in the UK. Okay. These are some. This is some of our research output. Some papers we have written on the subject. Um, this on the right, in, haptic surface painting is an extension of that, of haptic visual observation and drawing, and it uses uh, food coloring in water brushes to mark the on the skin. If any of you would like to, sorry, I'm just punting this. I, I, I um, am editor for this book by Springer uh, called Biomedical Visualization. So if 
anyone would like to get information about contributing a chapter, you're very welcome. And um, uh, our course, Exploring, well, actually, I shouldn't really be pushing this because the, you should contribute a chapter to Bloomsbury. Um, so Exploring 3D Anatomy is the course that we designed with art-based exercises. And um, it's myself and my colleague, Ian. So these exercises are designed to improve spatial awareness, which is a cognitive function. If you, anyone would like to try this course, please take a photograph of the um, QR code. You use your phone to do that. I'm coming to the end of this presentation now. It's certificated, you can, it's free. And uh, I think that it, it's, it's really well suited to artists, sculptors, um, uh, what they call architects, of course, we're aiming it at anatomy students. So I just want to acknowledge uh, the University of West of England, Birmingham City University Drawing Research Group team for your kind invitation to join us all today. And the UCT University of Cape Town Medical Students and healthcare professionals for their drawings, the students from British Columbia University. And of course, when we use cadaveric material like I have, some bones that I've used, we acknowledge with gratitude the contribution of body donors to the University of Cape Town Division of Clinical Anatomy and Biological Anthropology. It's a final slide that a student took, which I like, and from a workshop. So I'll stop sharing and thank you very much for your attention.